And uh, I'm a pediatric cardiac surgeon, and it's good to be here with you, uh, with pediatric cardiologists. And I really enjoyed yesterday. And I did a little change uh, in, on the title. I added the reconstruction, the word of reconstruction, instead of on the vice sparing. Uh, and I think it became the, a real correction instead of repair, as Dr. Gavlik mentioned yesterday. My regurgitation. And all we know, the adverse effects of my regurgitation, uh, especially for long term, and this symposium is based on the long term deleterious effects of my regurgitation. And uh, what about the immediate postoperative severe PI in terms of uh, restrictive right ventricular physiology? And as a surgeon, also a kind of a intensivist, we see these patients in ICU. And uh, if a patient with very low sets and or a delayed uh, tetralogy repair patient, uh, with restrictive right ventricular physiology and with severe PI, these patients cannot make the ICU and very high morbidity and very high mortality. So uh, I need to talk about this uh, in terms of restrictive physiology. And uh, as we know, the, it has been shown that total correction after 12 months of age of tetralogy of follow uh, increases mortality and morbidity. And also there are some papers about uh, the regression of right ventricular hypertrophy is possible if the surgery is done before six months of age. So our policy in my hospital is to repair the TED patients between six and nine months of age. And we can talk about the topic under two titles. The first one is pulmonary valve sparing. This means the annular preservation. And the second one is pulmonary valve reconstruction techniques, which includes transannular repair. And this is the simplest technique, the commissurotomy plus minus rigid bujo dilation. Uh, this is for mild to moderate PAs and little pulmonary valve dysplasia patients, and the pulmonary valve Z score should be more than minus two. And the pulmonary valve commissurotomy is done into the medial layer, and Hager dilators are serially inserted. Uh, I put these two pictures on the slide because the right side on the slide is regular straight Hager dilators, the left side is flexible olive tip dilators. These are the new instruments for pediatric cardiac surgery, and uh, these are better than this one for surgeons. And the second one is, uh, is, this paper is coming from Boston, from Emil Basha, and the Commissioner Tommy Plus Interoperative Balloon Pulmonary Valve Dilatation. And this is for moderate PAs, moderate pulmonary valve dysplasia patients, and pulmonary valve Z scores between minus two and minus four. And it starts with a Hager dilator without dilation, and then uh, uh, it goes with a balloon one millimeter larger than the Hager size. The balloons are gradually increasing in size one, uh, in by one millimeter increments, and this means the transient transmission of stress instead of a rigid Hager dilator, and maybe it promotes remodeling and growth of annulus, so it's coming from Boston. This is the most uh, useful and used technique for uh, annular preservation. This is transatrial transpulmonic repair. As you know, we open the right atrium, close the VST, open the MPA, look at the well and annulus, if it's okay, do nothing, some little commissure tomies if it's needed. We do some annular resection, but if it's a transannular patch is needed, so we, I think we switch to uh, the techniques I will show in a minute. So these patients usually have pulmonary well Z score more than minus two. And this technique is coming from Italy, I, from uh, Vladimir Vida, maybe I, he's from Padova. Uh, this is the leaflet delamination procedure. Uh, at the beginning of the technique, you do a protective commissurotomy, and then you dilate the valve with high-pressure non-compliant balloons, uh, and then we do leaflet delamination to increase pulmonary valve coaptation, and then we add resuspension plasty. The, the main advantage of the technique is pulmonary valve annual integrity, and the pulmonary valve of these scores is usually between minus two and minus four. And now these are the, the these are the techniques for transannular repair. The first one is uh, coming from Boston Children's, also from, from Emil Basha. And this is the technique which we use in my hospital, pulmonary cusp patch reconstruction, and the, the popular name is anterior lifted augmentation technique. And you, we have to keep the anterior pulmonary veil, and we split it into twice, and we attach the 0.1 millimeter PTFE pericardial membrane. It's a commercial product coming from Gore-Tex. Its name is Preclude. Uh, we attach, uh, we anchor it at both sides of anterior splitted anterior leaflet, and this means a uh, movable and flexible large anterior leaflet, and there are sometimes one, sometimes two posterior leaflets, and uh, it looks like a tri-leaflet or bi-leaflet pulmonary valve, 
and sometimes we use fresh pericardium. And these patients usually have pulmonary valve Z scores less than minus four. And the main, the most important thing is a pulmonary valve must not be severely dysplastic. It can be used as a valve. And this is coming from Florida, from Dr. Quinton Senza. And this is the Bishop Head technique. Uh, in the first series, it's coming from old days. In the first series, he used a 0.4 millimeter PTFE Gore-Tex graft, and then he switched to 0.1 millimeter PTFE membrane preclude. Uh, this technique, you create a bishop head size, bishop head shape pulmonary valve, and this is created for older children and adults. And the pulmonary valve Z score is less than minus four. And uh, this is the only technique which doesn't allow. Uh, annular growth, so you, you need to oversize this uh, bishop head. This is coming from Australia, from Dr. Graham Noon, and this is the second technique which we use in my hospital. Uh, it looks like a very complicated, but it's a real simple technique. Uh, the main, the aim is to create a bileaflet pulmonary valve. So you create at the end of the technique, at the beginning of the technique, we create a monoleaflet cusp. Excuse me like uh, here, and then we attached the, the bottom part, the most distal part of the leaflet to the posterior wall of the main pulmonary artery as close as bifurcation possible. And then we use 0.1 millimeter PTFE membrane, sometimes otolox pericardium, and the pulmonary valve Z score is less than minus four. This is the usual technical that all we know, the monocast PTFE pulmonary valve. I think it's not used alone anymore. Uh, Dr. James Brown is still using it in states. And at one year, the monocast valves underwent loss of function in a significant proportion. And this is another interesting technique. Uh, we use native pericardium or bovine pericardium. So in this technique, we open the, here in the, we open the anterior pulmonary leaflet towards the right ventricular outflow tract, we keep the integrity of the pulmonary valve. So we put a patch which includes right ventricular outflow tract and anterior incision of uh, anterior pulmonary leaflet, and then we put a second page on the MPA. So pulmonary valve Z scores is between minus two, minus four. If the annular Z score is less than the pulmonary valve Z score, it's a useful technique. And this paper is coming from Gissen, from Dr. Schranz and Akuntürk, and this shows beneficial effects of residual pulmonary stenosis, and these results support the strategy of our strategy also, uh, with the trend preserving pulmonary valve functioning and avoiding extensive relief of right ventricular outflow tract obstruction, even in the expense of mild residual stenosis. So we trust our technique. So according to this technique and descriptions, uh, we have a protocol in my hospital for tetrology follow patients, if the pulmonary valve Z score is more than minus two, we do transarterial transpulmonic repair. If it's between minus two and minus four, we first try commissurotomy plus uh, intraoperative balloon valve dilatation or bougie dilatation. If it doesn't work, we go with a transannular patching and then we switch to left side. If we use transannular patching, our first technique is anterior lift augmentation, which is coming from Boston. And the second technique is hands-on pulmonary valve repair is coming from Australia. And so far, we used this technique for uh, pulmonary valve Z scores less than four, 17 times in 17 patients since 2014. Uh, actually, 2013, since 2014, I have never done a transcellular patch without reconstruction pulmonary valve. So these patients are between six months and 10 years old and can have anterior fat augmentation, four gram noon and three bicuspid pulmonary valves. And uh, we have, uh, we ended up with eight trivial PRs, uh, six records, some mild records, three moderate pulmonary records, and to all of these three patients have lifted augmentation, and a mean 15, 20 millimeter mercury pulmonary gradients. The follow-up is between two months and 24 months. We have one late exitus, and uh, four patients still uh, have trivial PR, all have ground non technique, 10 have mild pulmonary regurgitation and two moderate pulmonary regurgitation. The gradient is still 20 millimeter mercuries. And in conclusion, uh, significant refinements have been made in the repair of strategy for tetrology of follow based on improved understanding of post-repair physiology. Important considerations for timing and technique of surgery have been presented and continued evaluation is expected. Expanded use of the pulmonary valve reconstruction techniques outlined herein, whatever the age of repair may improve long-term outcome. Thank you for your attention.